Hi, everyone. Welcome um, to our Facebook Live version of our Family Day program um, that coincides with our current exhibit, Well-Behaved Women. I'm Hannah Hammond Hagman. I'm the Education Director here at Lobesnik Center for the Arts. Um, so if you are watching this, you hopefully have swung by here at the center and picked up a kit that came in a paper bag that has um, some materials and supplies for three projects that we're going to do towards um, the end of the program. If you did not get a kit yet, don't worry at all. Um, follow us along on these demos um, and then you can always swing by here after today um, and get a kit because this video will live here. <laughs> Um, in online virtual space on our Facebook feed. So um, before we get started, I'm gonna give you a little outline of the next 45 minutes or so at the most. Um, so after this intro by me, um, you're gonna see some pre-recorded video footage of myself and um, our education coordinator, Laurel Izard. Um, we're gonna be giving a little tour of three of, um, of the artworks in this current exhibit, Well-Behaved Women. Um, there are many, many artworks to explore in the exhibit, so do feel free to come visit the center um, to see the entire exhibit at your time. Um, so we're going to do a video of three of those, and you're going to hear um, from one of the artists in the show, too, named Shannon Downey, and then Laurel and I will be back um, to do our projects together. So settle in. Maybe you're in your pajamas. Get a cup of coffee, whatever you need. Um, gather your kids and their favorite grown-ups, and let's get started on our virtual family day. See you in a minute. This piece by Melissa Blount is gonna teach us about 26 Afri African-American women who have had huge impacts on our history, both contemporary and further back. Um, and these are women that we haven't heard of mostly. These are lesser known black women. They're visionaries, um, entrepreneurs, historians, educators, um, civil rights activists, um, journalists, movie stars and singers that um, we don't know enough about. So Melissa Blount, who doesn't even consider herself an artist per se, um, she considers herself more of an activist. Um, she's an African-American woman who lives in Evanston. She's a psychologist psychologist by trade, right? Um, but she felt compelled to create this, what I think of as a book on the wall, of 26 lesser known African American women who've had deep impact on our history. Each of these is embroidered, like we learned with Laurel and Marie Bergstad. So here's another artist in this exhibit that's using craft it's using embroidery, which is a, a very laborious, labor-intensive process that involves lots of time and patience <laughs> to complete. And it's also something that um, we talked about earlier is always thought of as like a women's work, right? So embroidery was usually historically used for domestic objects and things that were decorative. But the women artists who are using embroidery in this exhibit are pulling on that history, right? But also using it in a fine art context. So that's a little revolutionary unto itself, okay? So these are 26 portraits that are each embroidered. The portraits are kind of a contour portrait, right? So what we're looking at is really just the outline of features on the faces. Um, simple line work to delineate hair and fabric. This is a technique that maybe you want to notice and consider when you make your own work, right, um, for your art project after this video tour is over. Think about making a contour portrait, right? Or even using lettering, like she used, um, for your own piece. Right now, for this tour, we're gonna talk about two in particular, okay? The first one we're gonna talk about is Biddy Mason. Biddy Mason is a former slave who moved with her owners to Los Angeles, California. She walked cross country with her owners. When they got to California at that time, California outlawed slavery, but her owners hid that fact from her. But she learned about it, and she fought for her own freedom as well as the freedom of her family members. She advocated for women's and girls' education. Eventually, she built a school for black girls she built the first African Methodist church in Los Angeles. She was a nurse, she was a midwife, and she saved her earnings over time. And she invested her money in real estate and in property. And over the years, 
she collected and amassed quite a bit of wealth. At the time of her death, um, there are estimates that she was worth over $3 million. But she lays a foundation and an advocacy for girls' education and civil rights in our country. And we should all know who Biddy Mason is. The second person, the second woman that we're gonna highlight on this tour is Majora Carter. She's a contemporary woman. She's living right now. She's from the Bronx in New York City. Um, the story is that she was walking through her neighborhood, I believe with her dog, right? And she came across the river and how the river meets New York City. And a thought occurred to her that even in deep urban spaces, we have nature. And nature enters those spaces. And what if, she thought, what if we could cultivate nature in urban spaces? What if neighborhoods could embrace more tree planting? What if there were more gardens? What if, what if, right? So she's a visionary and brilliant. She's a MacArthur Fellow and a Peabody winner as well. Um, and she became um, an activist for notions of revitalization of urban neighborhoods. And what that means is using nature and building sustainable environmental justice movements um, to make neighborhoods greener and safer for its inhabitants and for generations to follow. So she's a visionary when it comes to urban planning and how now when we think about cities and when we develop cities now that we should absolutely consider how nature overlays with the city and how we should be much more mindful and how, what would it mean? What would it mean to have more green space in your neighborhood? What would that look like, right? And so how can more green space or more environmentally friendly places in our neighborhood transform how we live in those neighborhoods and how we inhabit and use those spaces? So Marie Bergstadt is the woman who created this lovely piece. It's called Ladies in Lab Coats. And what she's doing is she's celebrating women scientists that sometimes get ignored by history, and yet this, there's a full history of women who have been scientists. The earliest one was from ancient Rome, and some of the latest women who have won Nobel Prizes in medicine, physics, or chemistry are contemporary with us. So um, what I want to call your attention to is that every piece of, that you see on this is stitched and embroidered. So all these scientific symbols that she has on the top of this piece are stitched by hand. Um, all the lettering on these that names the different artists and the dates that they were working are stitched by hand. So she spent many, 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 many hours. And so think how important this was for her to acknowledge these women scientists. 19 women have been awarded Nobel Prizes in science. Two of them that Bergstadt celebrates in this piece are um, Linda Buck and Tu Yu Yu a Chinese medical scientist who was concerned about the fact that malaria drugs were no longer healing people. She decided to study ancient texts and went back as far as 1600 years to find herbs that might work. And because of her studies and the research that they did in the lab, they were able to find two new drugs to treat malaria. So in 2015, her work was rewarded with a um, Nobel Prize in medicine. Another Nobel Prize winner is um, Linda Buck. And so what she studied was how we smell. She wanted to know what happens in our nose and what happens in our brain and allows us to smell all the wonderful things and maybe not so wonderful things that are out there in the world. Um, and I think that's pretty interesting stuff. Do you ever think about how you smell? And how, um, what's the difference between the way you are able to smell and the way that dogs or bears or cats can smell? How come they can smell so much more than we can? So she actually studied that and found out even though the way that dogs and people smell is the same, that dogs have way more receptors in their noses and that's why they can smell things from miles away. So if you had a chance to be a scientist or to discover something, what would you want to discover? What would you want to study? Do you think that you could 
come up with something that's so helpful for the world that you could get a Nobel Prize? Would you want to find something that would save lives? There's so many things to go out there and discover, and I think it's so important that we encourage everyone to find out what they can. Bergstadt said one of her things she wanted to do was to find positive things and to celebrate them. And that's what this coat is all about. Do you think that this makes a positive statement? Do you think it's good to have these things celebrated? Bergstedt wants to encourage girls to go into science. Do you think honoring these women that have been awarded is a good way to do that? Shannon Downey is an artist who goes to resale shops, auctions, um, fabric stores, and finds interesting pieces of fabric that she takes home and makes art out of it. I'm an embroiderist. I love embroidery. I'm going to tell you all about why I love embroidery. I think embroidery is the best medium ever. It is super inexpensive. You can get all the materials for just a few dollars, which means so many people can participate in embroidery. You can learn it super fast. Like I can teach anybody to embroider in under an hour and a half anybody. So she found this thing that looks quite a bit like part of an American flag or several American flags sewn together and her reaction to it was to create her own pledge of allegiance. I am an art activist and what that means is I use art as a way to um, tackle issues of social injustice and to build community around working on these issues. This piece, as you can see, it's got a pledge on it, but it's not the one you're say, it's, you know, using every day at school. And it says, I pledge allegiance to humanity and to the planet. We all share one species living under the stars, seeking love and justice for all. For me, the most important thing about the work that I do is bringing people together and building community through this medium. So like, I think of embroidery as just a way that I trick people into hanging out with me and talking about things that we're, we're told we're not supposed to talk to strangers about, right? Like, it's impolite to talk about politics or racial injustice or um, religion. And I bring people together and I say, let's talk about these things while we stitch about them. And what's nice is people totally want to do that because they want to stitch something. And when we're sitting there together, um, you know you're working on something so you don't have to like stare at somebody and have a conversation that's really hard so i love to stitch in community and bring people together um to to create to use their hands and to engage in conversations that aren't always easy and not always accessible to people to have with total strangers why do you think shannon downey wants to make work that causes discussion do you think we need to make changes in this country, in the world? If you saw changes that need to be made, how would you go about it? Could you use your art to make changes? Make art, smash systems, y'all. Greetings, I am so glad that you are here to join us for some art making, some of my favorite projects. I'm Laurel Izard. I'm the education coordinator here at Lebesnik, and I'm very excited about having our first online virtual um, family art day. So for this project, um, I've been very influenced and inspired by the words of encouragement, which Hannah is going to tell you more about um, after the, our art demos, but you are going to be embroidering with us. So what you're going to need from your your pouch, your bag, is you're gonna need your embroidery hoop, you need your fabric, you need your floss, this is what that's called, instead of, it's also a kind of thread, but it's called embroidery floss, um, your needle, you also need scissors, and a number two pencil. You might need tape, and I'll get to that in a bit. So first, let me show you some examples. Um, here is a nice um, embroidery piece that Hannah did. Um, she's got, you can notice there's one layer of stitching or one row of stitching on her words. Kindness is not weakness, which is really sweet. And so we've left this in the hoop so you can see what that looks like. 
Here's a piece that I've done earlier, which is not in a hoop, as you can see, obviously. And this one says, protect your hopefulness. Now, the difference is that because of the kind of lettering I used, I had to use several rows of stitches, so we can talk about that. But if you just want to do one row of stitch on your first project, that's fine, too. Um, so, moving ahead. So, also, I forgot to say this, but you're going to need a piece of scrap paper because once you write on your fabric, it's hard to get it off. So pencil erases on paper, not so much on fabric. So what I would like you to do is figure out what you want to put on your embroidery piece. You can do words. You could do an image of almost anything. It's really up to you what you want to do. Um, I decided to go along with the words of encouragement to, to do practice kindness. Um, so I, you know, do some lines, did my lettering on there. I want to tell you a way you can cheat at this. You can also um, type words out on your computer and print it and hold, um, use that to trace your lettering. So if you're, this fabric that we gave you, it's pretty easy to see through it. So what you want to do is center the fabric over your, the words you're doing, and you simply trace it with your pencil. Now, try to just do thin lines because you may, you know, pretty much you're going to have to stitch over whatever you write on here. So do that kind of gently, maybe sort of lightly, and like so. All right, once you've finished all that, you can center that you're writing in the hoop. Now I'm gonna say I'm one of those people that tends to move my hoop when it starts to get hard to reach a letter. So, okay, so let me go that step again. So I, I laid my fabric, centered the, the writing that I'm gonna embroider. Then I'm gonna put the, the hoop with the little screw on it on top. And then you gotta sort of hold both ends of this as you twist this. And you want to get that pretty tight in there. So you want to get tension, which means that the fabric is not going to slip around while you're stitching it. All right, so that once you have this step ready, you're ready to start work with your thread. But I'm going to switch into one I already started to make life easier. All right, so you will need your needle. And you're going to need the thread you're going to use. So I'm going to use some dark blue next. Um, the rule of thumb is to pull your thread about fingers to your elbow. Um, when I was younger, I liked to have a really, really long thread, and what I'll tell you that happens is it tangles up. Now, with embroidery floss, there's six strands, and it's tempting to want to stitch with all six, uh, six of them at once, and I'm going to tell you that that will not make you happy. It's, it's just hard to get it through, through the hoop and, or through the fabric, and it, it just, it's a mess. So I'm going to do two strands. You can do one strand. Three is good. I would recommend two or one. Um, and, you know, depending how many strands you use, that's how thick your, your stitches will be. Okay, so I am threading my needle. And now you might need to tie a knot on the end of it. So the bigger your needle, the bigger your knot. So sometimes, you know, I like to sew with really thick needles, be if I have thicker thread. And if I don't forget to put an extra knot on the end, it pulls right through the fabric. All right, so I've got two, I've tied that knot twice. Oops, I think it's tricky, okay. Now, so you want to sort of get your thread so it's, you know, this extra end is sort of halfway through. All right, so I'm going to start by sticking that needle right up where I'm going to start stitching. And so I'm going to teach you the um, stem stitch or the outline stitch. Um, it's a very basic st stitch. It's kind of versatile, which is what I like about it. So for this stitch, you're kind of stitching backwards. So I'm going to Make a stitch, you want to keep them fairly small, and then I'm going to go back halfway. So I'm sticking my needle in, I am going about halfway back, which ends up being sort of where the end of the last stitch. 
and then I'm going to just keep stitching around that edge. So I'm going in, going back up, halfway back, and up. Now, because you have two threads, kind of keep an eye on it because sometimes they're not going in that you're sort of keeping your tension and go in and out at the same rate. So that is embroidery. And while I'm stitching, I want to say how much I love embroidery. And what's so cool about it is that you can take it anywhere you go. Um, I know Shannon likes to use it as a meditation. She, does, she lis doesn't listen to music or watch television or anything. I like to do it while I'm watching television. So instead of just sitting around watching TV, I'm also embroidering. So that is our embroidery project. Thank you for joining us. Tagging me in. Hi, <laughs> Hannah again. Um, thank you, Laurel, for that beautiful embroidery example. I had never embroidered before. Um, and I was fortunate enough to take um, a small online workshop with Shannon Downey um, with a number of women via Zoom. And um, I find it to be so calming and indeed so meditative. And in this time where we're spending a lot of our time on screens, like we are right now, um, it's a really nice hand work process. Um, so we're going to kind of just lay out all of the things that you have in your kit. We're not going to spend the rest of the time here on Facebook um, embroidering, finishing the embroidery. So I know that you've probably already started and you're totally into it. Um, but if you just want to set it aside for just a few more minutes, um, I'm welcoming my son, Avi, to our virtual family day. Hey, kiddo. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Because um, what's a family day without, you know, the little humans that we love this much? So um, Avi and I are going to talk about um, some of the other materials that you got in your kit. And again, if you're watching this and you don't have a kit, fear not. We still have some here at the center. Um, so you can swing by during our business hours and pick them up. They are free to you. Um, every person who wants one, you need to take one kit per person, not one kit per family. Just a heads up. Um, but this video will live here on this feed, and I think we'll post it to YouTube even later um, so that you can come back and access this if you need to go through it again to see Laurel's demo or any of the things that Avi and I are about to do right now. Sound good? So we're going to move some of the embroidery stuff. Will you help me, my love? Just kind of gently move some of that. So the next thing we're going to talk about is you got to, t we, Laurel and I talked to you about three artworks that are in this exhibit, Well-Behaved Women. Um, Black Girl Magic by Melissa Blount, The Ladies in Lab Coats by Marie Bergstedt, and Shannon Downey's piece, I Pledge Allegiance. All three pieces are fantastic, and they tell amazing stories and really inspirational narratives about so many women, right? Do you have a favorite of those three? A favorite piece? I really like the um, I Pledge Allegiance one. I do too, I do too, I do too. So this next project, you, in your kit, you will have um, a paper plate, <laughs> looks like this. Um, and then you will have some small white squares of paper. So what we're going to do now is you're going to use those materials, and I'll lay out our examples here on the table so the camera overhead can see. But you get to make portraits of women in your life that you find inspirational, right? Um, so this is one of Yayoi Kusama, who's an amazing Japanese artist. She does those infinity rooms. If you haven't seen any of those, I highly recommend Googling her and checking her out. Um, so you can choose a, a woman that's inspirational to you in your life. It doesn't need to be a famous woman. Um, it can be your mom. It can be your teacher. It can be your auntie. That was very sweet. Did you see that? <laughs> so, um, um, so Avi and I talked about this project. And also, kind of Laurel inspired us also using text or language with her embroidery, which was then inspired by Shannon's work as well. So you can even do an inspirational phrase or um, a quote if you like, on your piece. So here's one 
quote, um, I wear a mask <laughs> for your safety. And again, we're using this paper plate as a, like a super decorative frame for these pieces. And then in your kit, you also have these really fun adhesive rhinestones because rhinestones make everything better. <laughs> you agree? Agree. Totally agreed. So um, we're all about glitter and rhinestones when we make crafts at home and we wanted to share that love with you guys. So here you have some rhinestones that you can add to your piece as well. And also in your kit, you'll have this funny looking little, this is a magnet strip that is adhesive, right? So this will peel off and it's like a sticker. So when your piece is finished, you can peel and stick this on the back for some epic fridge art. <laughs> Sound good? Um, so you, the whole family can each make their own inspirational woman or person. Um, or your inspirational phrase or quote, and then um, hang those on the refrigerator as your family gallery from LCA Virtual Family Day. So those are those samples. And then I made quick little drawings of some women that I find inspirational, and then Avi's gonna tell you about his sample that he made. So here's, this is a little drawing, very little drawing of Katherine Johnson who was also depicted in Black Girl Magic. Um, she, as you may know if you've seen the film Hidden Figures, which is a fantastic film and I highly recommend it. You loved it also? I know. Um, she was a, um, an African-American woman who was a mathematician for NASA and helped develop the formulas and equations to help people get to the moon. I mean, how cool is that? So um, I chose to think about Katherine Johnson as an inspirational woman, and maybe I would glue her onto my plate like this, and maybe fill that whole background with like math equations or other inspirational things, and then stick rhinestones. You know, we use them sometimes as a border, but you can also kind of cut these apart and then stick them around your drawing. Another woman, of course, that we're thinking a lot about lately is who? Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Justice Ginsburg. So here's a little drawing of the notorious RBG herself <laughs> that we made. Um, and again, you know, if she's somebody that inspires you, um, and may her memory be a blessing. Um, if she inspires you, then you can choose to um, use her as your piece, your inspirational woman portrait here on these decorative rad paper plate frames. And then this was Avi's. It's a Ruth Bader Ginsburg quote because I find her very inspirational and this is one of my favorite quotes from her. Can you read the quote for us? Yes. Fight for the things you care about, but do it in a way that will lead others to join you. Ruth yes. Give me a high five. Nice, right? So it could just be a quote. Um, sometimes I think about going back to things that are personally, you know, a personal narrative. If you want to do something that's more personal to you, I think about the words that my mom always said, like there are phrases growing up that she always said to me over and over and over again. And so when I was thinking about samples, a couple of those words were ringing in my ears too. Like um, she always told me, you do you which I love and I often say to Avi. Yeah. Um, so they can be famous women, they can be women that are in your family. You can make portraits of each other for your <laughs> fridge gallery, all right? So um, you can use any drawing materials you have on hand. We use pencils and ballpoint pens, crayons, markers, whatever you have. And then um, do you finish your portrait? Oh wait, I also have, where'd she go? Mm, I had a Frida Kahlo collage that I wanted to show you guys too. This is fun, this is live. <laughs> so I used this little drawing that actually Laurel made this drawing of Frida and I kind of pilfered that um, and then did cut like um, floral things and some fruits and plants out of a magazine and put this collage together of Frida, which I kind of love. Frida's also deeply inspirational to me and maybe to others. This is a shout out to Mrs. Ledyard who's watching us right now because I know that she is a huge Frida Kahlo fan. Um, and also happy birthday to Ada, who I think is 10 today. Um, so you can use a glue stick or you can use white glue and all you're gonna do is simply glue these guys in place. Mrs. Ledyard teaches art at Springfield Elementary School here in Michigan City. We love it when she comes and brings her students. So this is really easy glue in place in your frame, right? Yep. 
can't get easier than that. And then we can take some crayons here and maybe we want to color in her necklace. But this can be as detailed as you want it or as simple as you want it. I love the super simple contour portraits in um, Melissa Blount's piece. And that's kind of what I was thinking about for the RBG and the Katherine Johnson. So you can make it as decorative and ornate as you want or as simple and clean as you like. It's totally up to you. Okay, so have fun with this um, and have a conversation about it. Like, who are the women that inspire you and why? Um, Avi and I had a lot of fun kind of um, just talking about those things and figuring it out to make these samples, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, thanks. I'm glad you're here. Um, so that's the second project is your inspirational portrait project using that paper plate and some of the sparkly things, you know, that we put in the kit. Um, if you've got other stuff, you can add to it. Certainly, like, you can collage. If you've got buttons or other cool stickers that you have lying around the house, go for it. Um, and we would love to see what you make. So once you complete the project, any of these projects, um, go ahead and take a photo of them and upload them in the comments section to this event on our Facebook page. Um, I'll put these samples in the comments too, so that if you need to go back and look at the samples that we've made that you totally can, um, they'll be there, the images will be there for you. Our third and final project that's in your kit is a little different. So each kit, um, you got two of these postcards, right? And so one side is completely blank, and the other side you'll notice is addressed to us here at the Lebesnik Center for the Arts, and it has a cool star on it. So this postcard um, project correlates with an exhibit that's happening in this room that I'm in. I'm in our NIPSCO Education Studio classroom here at the Lebesnik Center. And um, there's an exhibit up, you can see part of it behind us right now, of these great posters and flyers. So um, we are a presenting partner of this exhibit called Words of Encouragement um, and Paper Sign of the Times. It was curated by Indiana University Northwest and Lauren Pachenko, um, and we are thrilled to be hosting this through the end of this month. It'll be in place through October 31st. Um, and they collaborated with um, a hand-painted sign company in Chicago called Heart and Bones. And Heart and Bones put out a call to sign artists and typography artists um, to loan their work and contribute their craft to this words of encouragement. And so these are complicated times right now. Um, and so they were interested in putting together inspirational messages and indeed words of encouragement during these times when we're dealing with so many, when we're dealing with a COVID um, as long as, as well as systemic racism um, in this country. And so these signs that fill this room are meant to lighten our hearts um, and to make sure that we all feel like we're in this together, which is a beautiful thing. Um, like I said, we're thrilled to have this here. It's really inspirational. I like to come in here, um, you know, when I'm at work. <laughs> and Avi and I have also made some signs that contribute to this exhibit, which is where you come in and which is where these postcards come in. Um, part of this exhibit is that we have a community wall. One of the walls in this space is completely left for your contributions. So whether you're a physical visitor to the center, um, there are materials here that you can add your own words of encouragement or your own inspirational messages to the exhibit and they'll be on view um, through this month. We did a postcard project with our students in, in partnership with the Safe Harbor program and um, we gave them kits, much like yours, <laughs> that had the postcard template in it. And um, we gave them stamped postcards and we just got these back in the mail. And it's fantastic and so amazing to see these made by our elementary school students. I'll spread some of these out here. Um, here's one that says peace, love sees no color. Aren't these fantastic? Yes. Treat others how you want to be treated. We can't ever forget how important that is. Every child is an artist. This one says positive vibes, respect other space. So kids are contributing to this exhibit in really beautiful ways. Um, this one simply says, you got this. I kind of need that right now, right? So what you have in your kit is the very same postcard template. You can choose to work vertically or horizontally. 
Um, and we would love to hear your contributions to words of encouragement and paper signs of the times. Think about what message do you want to put out in the world? You know, what, what inspirational phrase or quote can you offer people right now or offer each other right now while we're kind of together apart in all of this, right? Um, do remember to put a stamp on yours, please, and then just drop it in the mail. And it'll come to us here at the Lebesnik Center and it'll become part of this exhibit down here in the NIPSCO space, all right? And then you can come visit your artwork <laughs> here through October 31st. The Well-Behaved Women exhibit is on view through October 23rd, so there's still time to come see it here in person. We have great safety measures in place. If you have any questions about that, feel free to give us a call. Um, enjoy these three projects. Spend some time right now. Maybe we'll end soon and you can get off the screen and you can spend some time <laughs> with, you know, kids can spend some time with their favorite grownups um, and work on these projects into the afternoon. Any questions, comments, you know, chime in on the event page. And like I said, we're gonna post some photos of all of these samples um, that we've put together so you can refer to them if needed. It's been wonderful to spend this little time with you this afternoon. Um, any final words from you, my love? Not really. Not really? Did you have a good time? Yes, it was very fun. Well, I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm glad. So um, Avi, Laurel, and I, um, we want to say goodbye. We wish you a fabulous afternoon, and we hope to see you soon at the center. Bye. Have a great afternoon. Bye.